So welcome to Marathon. <laughs> Um, I can start. I'm Barb Zellick, and I am one of the Rural Family uh, Generalist Physicians in Marathon, and I am also the co-chair for Family Medicine at NOSM currently. Uh, I'm Sarah Newberry. I'm a Rural Generalist here in Marathon as well, and I've been here for 23 years. Um, I'm really glad for the opportunity to have this conversation. Barb and I uh, work side by side and have done for about 20 years now, but mm -hmm. it's not every day we have an opportunity to have a conversation that's a bit more intentional about the work that we do and the work that we do with NOSM. So we're, uh, we're looking forward to having this conversation and sharing it with you. Great. So Barb, one of the things um, that I think is really important for us to think about, and you and I have both used the language of rural generalist in our opening comments. Um, and I, I think one of the things that we both spend a fair amount of time talking about is the competencies that are required to practice in small places like Marathon. And I am curious about how you see that basket of competencies for rural generalism. Yeah, so um, what I really appreciate, and I think one of the things we've talked mm -hmm. about is how uh, we all have our individual competencies yeah. and we need a certain amount of um, solid uh, foundation and base competencies, but as a group, mm -hmm. how we can kind of complement and work together and build a set of competencies. Yeah. And I think that is incredibly powerful. And I think the other part um, that we've talked about, and I've heard you use this language a lot, Sarah, it was around uh, community adaptiveness, yeah. right? And so I think that is one of the um, amazing benefits of NASA. Um, and the exposures that learners have mm -hmm. at NOSM in terms of the different types of rotations, so the 106, the 108, 110, as well as the CCC placements that expose them yeah. uh, to these different environments and um, uh, expose them to kind of how groups work together mm -hmm. to develop various competencies to provide service to communities. Yeah, yeah I think that's a great point, and I, I, I think around NOSM we... We talk a lot about social accountability and education, right? And that idea that um, students should be trained in contexts that are similar to where they're going to work and that that's part of NOSM's social accountability. But I think we don't actually spend a lot of time talking about what social accountability in practice mm -hmm. is. And, um, you know, I've had some good conversations with people over the, the last couple of years about what social accountability as a clinician in a rural place really means. And... Someone, someone framed it this way, and they, they talked about the fact that sometimes our patients come in with issues that we don't know anything about, mm -hmm. and that we might actually have no interest in at all. So for example, if I have a patient who's diagnosed with hepatitis, I might not be interested in learning about hepatitis. I might not want to know anything more than I already know about hepatitis. But you do that reading, you do that learning, because we need to be able to meet the needs of our patients. And I think... To me, that's, that's sort of the definition of social accountability in practice and the community adaptiveness that happens amongst a group of clinicians when we can say, hey, you know, ultrasound in the eMERGE is an emerging technique that wasn't available to any of us when we trained, but we can see the value in being able to provide that. And so you took that on and You're learned that. You're dating us, Sarah. <laughs> I know, this is how old we are. There, there was ultrasound. It just wasn't focus ultrasound to the eMERGE. Um, but to be able to take on that new skill, and as <clears throat> mental health and addictions issues have been a more emerging issue in small communities, I think, over the last several years, for us as a group to decide that we're going to learn more about addictions and, and find ways to manage addictions better as a group. And to me, that's what community adaptiveness and social accountability mean and to your point at the beginning Barb I think you raised the the idea about having that base of generalist skills mm -hmm. that we should all have when we come out of medical school and residency but that we might tailor those to meet the needs of the community holding a collective generalism as a group and I, I think um, I think that's a really valuable thing and I think you're right that Nelson does that provides the opportunity to learn that well. Yeah, and I think I would certainly encourage um, learners to take those opportunities, yeah. right? So as medical students, um, you're going to have the opportunity to be exposed to clinic clinicians with these amazing skill sets. And if you can come out and think, okay, 
I can use those skills and then decide where you want to go with that, but really focus on on those generalist skills. I think there's incredible opportunities to to develop that that knowledge set. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, my question for you, Sarah, is yeah. around um, how the NOSM curriculum supports understanding healthcare systems. I know of you as mm-hmm. being a, a an amazing advocate and leader in terms of understanding primary Mm -hmm. care systems sort of at local, provincial, and national levels. And so I just wonder if you could share kind of your thoughts about how NOSM supports that understanding for learners. I think one of the things that NOSM does really well is invite students into a conversation about understanding the healthcare system from the context of rural and northern Ontario. Because I think our unique geography helps people to understand Um, very early on that there needs to be a system because patients have to flow from one place to another, from one service to another. So I I think NOSM's approach of case-based learning and placing students in communities early where they can begin to understand um, that there is a system that we work within, there's a system that patients experience, through which patients experience their care, um, is is fundamentally really important. And I think the beauty of experiencing things in small communities is that it kind of is this little microcosm of mm-hmm. the system so that students are moving back and forth between the clinic and the hospital and they're encouraged to do their community learning sessions and understand what it is to receive care at a mental health agency in the local community or what it is to be part of the children's aid service or victim services or the palliative care volunteer community, whatever the agencies are that they happen to encounter. I think NOSM does create opportunities for students to understand that there are connections between each of those and that as physicians, we need to understand what those agencies have to offer our patients and 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 how we can best interact with those services for the good of our patients and our communities. And from that, um, um, your kind of advocacy around primary care and generalism, if there was a message that you could give to every new medical student coming into NOSM, yeah. um, what would that message be? Uh, it's a great question. I think, um, y- you know, I think it would really tie back to the issue of generalism. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that there is such a rich opportunity at NOSM to understand what generalism is. And I feel like we hear from our urban colleagues sometimes about the erosion of generalism in an urban context because it's actually harder in some ways to maintain a skill set um, when the hospital is far away from where your clinic is and um, that it's just harder to do that. And I actually think that the generalist skills that exist among clinicians who work in our small communities are skills that benefit the whole of the system. Mm -hmm. I think there's a temptation sometimes to see rural practice as kind of a poor second cousin or as somehow lesser, but we know that what creates value in the healthcare system, we know that what um, is foundational about primary care in the healthcare system largely is continuity, comprehensive care, coordinated care in a patient medical home kind of setting where patients understand the expectation of the services that they can receive. And and I think that is um, demonstrated probably most robustly in small communities where physicians are seeing patients in clinic. They're admitting them to hospital. They're following them in hospital. They're discharging them. They're seeing them again in clinic or in their home context. That degree of continuity and comprehensiveness of service I think exists actually in very few places in the system, Mm -hmm. but it exists uh, richly in small communities in Northern Ontario. And I think our healthcare system, if we could replicate some of that rural generalism in other settings, we would be much better off as a healthcare system. Obviously, Sarah, I agree. Uh, Having been practicing in Marathon for almost 20 yeah. years. Um, what would you say, though, so I am from Toronto originally, and if I'd come into medical school and said, yeah. I want to be a pediatric vascular surgeon, yeah. um, but I'm at NOSM, but that's my career path, 
what would your be your message to me in that sort of situation? <laughs> yeah, so I think that's a great question. First of all, I would say congratulations for knowing so early on what you want to do. Um, but I think it's true that people come to Nossum with a variety of experiences that really inform that path. And, and some people are very clear about what they want to do. And I think one of the things that Nossum does really well is offer people the opportunity to have a generalist base mm -hmm. to their training. And I think it's tempting when you know so clearly what you want to do to feel like, you know, maybe you don't want to do a rural family medicine placement, or you might feel like that mandatory placement in Marathon um, isn't, isn't for you because you know you never want to be that rural generalist. But I would say embrace those opportunities. I, I really feel like the specialists who have an understanding for what it means for patients to travel from a place like Marathon to have their pediatric vascular surgery at Sick Kids in Toronto, they have a different appreciation for what, what that means for patients. They have a different understanding of what the limitations of resources are in our community when they're sending their mm -hmm. patients back. They have a more appropriate set of expectations. So I, I think about an example of one of my most complicated patients who... Um, really struggled with a very complicated malignancy. And his surgeon was actually at uh, Sunnybrook and was one of the preeminent GI surgeons in the province. But his understanding of what it was like for that patient to be here and what it was like for me to try to provide care for him here in a really limited resource setting, I think just made his care that much better, mm. made that surgeon's attention to detail about making sure that I understood follow-up expectations, making sure that I had access to him at the times that I might need it, was really remarkably helpful. And I think that understanding and affinity for Northern Ontario and remote practice settings is really, really valuable. I think, too, you know, we, you and I used the language earlier on about clinical courage and mm. the importance of understanding that sometimes you'll be asked to do something in a rural and remote setting that you may never have done before, may only have done once or twice, because it's not common. And the, the fact that you just need to do that thing, because there's nobody else better place to do it than you in that moment. And I think that that sometimes is the case for tertiary specialists mm -hmm. as well. They encounter the rarest of the rare things, and, and may be asked to do procedures that they've never done before, or maybe have only done once or twice. It may be a novel thing. And they, they also have to have that clinical courage mm -hmm. to do the thing that they might not be fully comfortable doing. And so I think embrace the opportunities that Nossum provides. Learn through that lens of what you think it is that you want to do. What what would it mean for this patient to see me in downtown Toronto? I, I think I think that's totally um, I think it's totally appropriate. And I think that the opportunity for specialists to understand the small community context makes them better specialists for rural and northern patients. And one of the really, I think, reassuring things um, for uh, new learners and medical students who are interested in specialty rotations is to know that historically NOSM has a very high match rate um, in general. So, um, so students have been successful in specialties and moving on to subspecialties if that's the career choice that they truly have. So, Barb, earlier in our conversation, we talked a little bit about social accountability in education and social mm -hmm. accountability in practice. And I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the way in which research can support social accountability. Yeah, so I think this is actually one of the huge strengths uh, that NOSM provides, and um, for learners as well as, I think, faculty. Mm -hmm. And one of the examples just around supporting social accountability and, um, I think, being meaningful for communities is an example from a number of years ago that was local. So mm -hmm. it was a research project that I had the uh, opportunity to participate in with one of my colleagues, Ellie Arantia, which, where we looked at the delivery of obstetrical yeah. services and uh, both physician and patient satisfaction mm -hmm. around that. It was 
important for us to understand sort of in a rural context yeah. um, what these women's experiences were like. Um, we had been creative around a new model of care, so we wanted to understand how the physicians felt about that. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were able to undertake sort of a research study, and it was actually incredibly meaningful in terms yeah. of, I think, being able to support our ongoing yeah. obstetrical program. Yeah. Um, and another part of that was understanding what are the uh, clinical circumstances where women end up delivering outside of the community. Um, And again, we were able to adapt some internal policies, really, um, around how we delivered obstetrical services. So so that's just a really kind of meaningful example for me. Um, And I just think um, from a NOSM perspective, um, again, there's this great support for community-based research. And I'm really excited about where that's going to to go in the next few years. I think we've been really focused on curriculum, the delivery of curriculum. Um, um, But I really see sort of research and research in primary care Mm -hmm. uh, as sort of the next really important evolutionary steps in some way for us as a medical school. Thanks, Bert. That's great. Uh, 